Sarmiento from Sarmiento Motorsports coming at you here with some more maintenance tips. Okay, so we have already discussed Nerf bars, bumpers, vortex on the dyno, Nerf bar installation, cool stuff like that. All right. Now, here's a thing that everyone could do from home. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna show you as simple as possible. Oil change. You gotta have an oil change, right? Uh, let me show you how easy that is, and maybe some tech tips that could help you out on that. But you no, know, we gotta see what we have, what we work with, right? So we need our oil. Okay, this is what I use. I'm an AMS oil dealer. But even before becoming an AMS oil dealer, I was using this oil, and honestly, when I switched, world of difference. But definitely fresh, clean oil. Okay, fresh, clean oil. Whatever you're using, it's just Yamaha, semi-synthetic, full synthetic. I am more of a synthetic oil person that way it lasts a lot longer too um and also to the uh the strain that these machines can go through whether you use maxima bell ray but definitely for me hands down is the ams oil 10w40 the dirt series oil um and we'll uh put a link to that also to my um how to get this stuff okay um fresh oil filter with an oem or a uh an oem filter or equivalent or something that exceeds the OEM. Okay, so we use a high flow filter. Um, and the tools are pretty basic. One five millimeter, it doesn't have to be a snap on, it can be a whatever Husky, um, Harbor Freight, don't matter. A five millimeter T handle or a five millimeter socket adapter. Okay, a 12 millimeter socket, an extension helps, three attraction. Okay, and I'll even show you, we don't have to put this on crazy tight. If you have a wobble extension, that actually does make life a lot easier, okay? So, extension that is not, you know, straight on all sides, so it actually allows the socket to wobble a little bit. And it does help out, okay, especially with the skid plate and stuff. And the um, the lower drain bolt is, that's under the shifter is not like a straight, a straight on shot. So having a little bit of a wobble extension, I'm telling you, will save you a trip to see me possibly, you know, for stripped engine cases. I've fixed a lot of them. Okay, let's talk about the oils. What oil do you put in it? Okay, well, this is obviously our OEM chart, right? And going here to our OEM chart, this is actually a temperature chart. All engines have a temperature chart. And what we need to honestly understand what this temperature chart is, is telling us. I live here in Florida, so it's always hot here. Okay, it's usually in the in the summer, mid to upper 90s. So at 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 degrees, or 104 degrees Celsius, or up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I actually already calculated 40 degrees Celsius. So right there, 104 to 110. So 10W40 will suit me fine. Now I was born in California, and so I understand desert climate as well. So I I definitely have have felt and been in 120 degree plus weather in California, Southern California, New Mexico, Arizona, and it is blistering hot. Our humidity here in Florida, though, it takes an extra toll. So maybe in the summer, especially if you feel that it, it, your uh, your oil is is thinning out too easily, you might want to consider maybe like 10W50. But from OEM, the OEM Yamaha or Yamalu, they have a 2050. Ham's oil has a 10w50 and even a 10w60 i've actually used the 10w50 for myself in the summer and it does work excellent and why the thicker oils in the hotter climates and then thinner oils like 5w30 in you know freezing temperatures because the fact the hotter it is right the the viscosity thins out right as the engine builds heat the temperature outside ambient temperature right the hotter it is the oil gets thinner the colder it is, it's not going to thin out as easily. So you need a thinner oil to actually lubricate the parts correctly in freezing temperatures. So those of you that, you know, do like ice racing, all that good stuff out in the snow that's freezing, you know, yes, you need to run a thinner oil. Um, but 10W40 across the chart really, 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 really does well from like 10 degrees to 110 degrees. So that's a pretty wide range. So we'll get a good shot of that. And this is from OE, the OEM with the 
recommendations are for this engine. So, but this is my normal go-to, like 99% of the time. Um, just in the summer, especially I know I'm gonna be, you know, pumping out a lot of summer training or something like that, or I've done before in the past, and I'll use 1050. Okay, no problem. And also we'll go with, you know, showing you also to try not to over torque things. Okay, and there are torque specs to the bolt. So I've had a lot of people come to see me like, man, dude, Matt, I, I stripped some of my, uh, my, you know, engine cases and, you know, I'm really in a predicament. Can you fix that? And I've fixed a lot of engine drain cases. I have yet you know, had to fix one for myself um, that I've deliberately or accidentally, excuse me, let's rephrase that, accidentally stripped the uh, drain bolt and pulled the threads out of the casing, okay? I'll show you that good stuff. I'll show you some, some tips if you have like a skid plate, how to not make a mess, okay? Um, normally, I, I normally run the, uh, the uh, Pro Ballistics skid plates uh, from Glenn Turner, been awesome, love his products, awesome. Um, or if you're a BCC guy, Frankie Witt with BCC, he has great products as well. I might, I might hit up Frankie and see about maybe getting a skid plate for this machine. Um, try the different products, which is cool. But I've been running the uh, Pro Ballistics on my other machines for a while, and they've lasted. I mean, they've lasted a beating. So, um, big shout out to Glenn Turner there, for Pro Ballistics, fantastic stuff. But sometimes, yeah, the skid plates, yeah, you can make a mess out of it. I'm gonna show you some ideas or some tricks. Yeah, it takes a little more effort, but some tricks to not make a mess. Okay, so let's get right to it. Okay, so here's our machine. Um, she's beautiful, she's awesome. Uh, she's been living on the dyno, we'll go with that. Um, so really not too hard with this. If you want to take the uh, the factory skid plate off, you can. It does make it easier, but I'll leave it on. And I'm gonna show you some of the tricks, the techniques like I use on my other machine and I've used on customer's machines to have a, you know, a full skid plate under it. And it does help. And, and uh, a, you know, a polyurethane skid plate really helps a lot, especially with rocks, navigating rocks and things like that. It helps, you know, really protect the bottom of your engine and, you know, the bottom, you know, look, you know bottom frame rail of it better. So here's the tip, okay? This is where a little bit of effort comes in. If you want to do it this way, if you have a skid plate, you have a, a jack stand. It doesn't have to be a gigantic one. A jack stand, block of wood, floor jack, um, like a nice little quick aluminum floor jack. It makes life easier. So the, here's the tips, and I'll show it to you when we go about it. If you lift the back of the machine, right? Put the swing arm on the on a jack stand. Now we're actually gonna pitch that oil out quicker. Every time it always leaks oil right on top of that bracket, right that goes right across for the uh, lower motor mount. Um, normally, not I can usually miss that, um, and especially if you have a skid plate, it definitely likes to get all over that thing. So the stock one isn't too bad. I'm not gonna deny that it actually doesn't isn't too bad. The rear one though does like to get a little messy, and I'll show you how to avoid that. And whether you have the stock one or a skid plate, but if like I say, if you want to take the stock one off, it's about four bolts. It's pretty easy, and it snaps snaps loose in the back. But I'm gonna go with you know with using it and see if we could demonstrate not making a mess. All right, so I'm gonna get set up and I'll I'll get down here and show you how it's done. All right, so we have our machine already elevated. It's about 12 inches off the ground. For me, yeah, I don't mind just grabbing it really quick by the back axle and the grab bar and just picking it up and really quick throwing it on the jack stand. Um, it's quick and convenient. It's not too tough. Whatever works for you. Um, we have our drain pan down. Down a little ready to start catching some oil. I'm gonna show you how to do this process one time. You're supposed to, excuse me, not supposed to, highly recommend it, and it is, you're supposed to, from the uh, factory. Warm, warm up the engine, you know, so run it for a little bit, warm it up, that way, obviously now, all the oil circulated, and it's warmed up, warm oil comes out easier. So, the colder climate you live in, you do wanna warm it up to where the actual engine cases get a little bit, a little warm, okay? Makes life a lot easier. It doesn't be blistering hot, but it makes life a lot easier draining. Before I ever start, I always take out the dipstick and the key, just because I've done about a million oil changes for customers' machines. There is an O-ring in there, okay? It's actually kind of a good, a good habit to take it out and just stick it right back on. Give it a wipe, that way it doesn't show oil all over the place. And this is just me personally, it's just my, my way, I always just stick the dipstick right through the key and I throw it right on the bench. 
That way I don't accidentally turn this engine on by mistake without oil. I got caught up into something else. I got a business phone call, whatever question, and it does happen. Um, so anything you can do to help prevent an accident, it's a good idea. All right, so we have our 12 millimeter socket on the wobble, extension, three attraction, and good to have a rag handy. All right, so we got ourselves a nice shot right at the drain bolt. We threw a light here on the frame for your viewing pleasures, all right? So we are on it. Make sure you have the socket all the way in. And just give it a twist. Normally I like to pull the ratchet off and then just turn it by hand. Not a problem. Easy peasy. And the stock one always, since it has this bridge right here, it's always gonna splash a little bit of oil right there. But at this angle, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Like I said, if you don't take the uh drain the um the stock skid plate off. But now if you have a dip an aftermarket skid plate, they're a lot harder to take off. Okay, there's our oil. Yes, it looks brand new. Yes, it is very clean and better to do that. This is just the braking oil. So this, again, this machine has had its, you know, start of its life already on the dyno. And uh, we wanna keep this uh, this motor running good. And there's definitely, there's definitely contaminants in it. It is plainly visible. We'll get a shot right there. Plainly visible, there's contaminants in this oil, right? I mean, this thing has about maybe six passes on the dyno, and you can see that, yeah, there's metal shavings in there. There's metal, you know, sparkles in there. You know, it's not, oh my God, there's chunks of metal coming out. Yeah, it is as thin as the oil, but there's some metal in there because this was a brand new engine, okay? So there, here's an easy equ equation. So some people are like, oh, you know, how long should I take, you know, for braking this that? Some people say a, a tank of gas. Some people say, you know, a few hours, a moto. Honestly, the sooner you could do it, the better even if it's in 10, 15 minutes of engine running oh, on a brand spanking new engine, because there's a lot of things that are, well, breaking in. There's a lot of things that are moving, you know, new bearings, new clutch, um, you know, cylinder walls, piston, valves, you know, all those things, you know, they all have a wear factor and they have to, you know, set themselves in, right? They have to break in, so. And going back up top, as you can see, we have not got a single drop of oil on the uh, the engine lower support bar, right? Which is usually a tough, which is usually tough. So a lot of times when it's on flat ground, it will it will get like a line of oil and it'll start kind of running all over this this bar all over here. So just from propping up, you with the stock skid plate on there, that helps uh, tremendously. So now you can see if you have a aftermarket skid plate, it will definitely keep that from becoming a mess. And I'll show you now how to do the second drain plug. And what we'll, we'll, I normally like to just wait till it stops dripping. And also too, when, when, you, when you turn it up like that, then it helps drain the oil a lot faster too, so. All right, so we're gonna take a little, little quick tech tip here, all right, while the engine oil is draining. So this is our front drain bolt. The rear drain bolt is the same, okay? Notice there's a crush washer on it, okay? Oh, yeah, that guy's sticking with the oil. There we go. There's a crush washer, okay? If you do not have that crush washer, please put one on. It is recommended to put one on. Have an oil change. The uh, OEM one works great. Um, you could use copper aluminum. They both work really good. Um, and that really helps keep from having oil leaks or you know, accidentally over tightening as well, right? So that crush washer is what seals the head of this bolt to the engine case. Okay, now how tight to make this bolt, okay? So going back to the uh, manual, it says that the engine drain bolt is supposed to be 14 foot pounds. 14 foot pounds is about 168, I believe, inch pounds of torque. Okay, uh, I'll double check that. And um, for the oil filter element drain bolt, it's supposed to be 7.2 foot pounds of of torque that should be uh 86 I believe 0.4 but about 86 inch pounds of torque okay now I'll double check that I believe yeah the first one should be like 168 inch pounds if you're using an inch pound wrench okay or a foot pound wrench but more importantly use your senses I mean if it feels like it's getting a little little softer getting a little tweak to it it's okay you don't have to you know over tighten it because it is easy to strip 
it's only aluminum. Okay. All right, so we have our bolt on the uh, socket, 12 millimeter socket, and I dialed it down to a quarter inch, right? As you can see, this is a quarter inch ratchet with an extension, not a very big ratchet. Okay, about a six inch ratchet. You do not have to go ape on this thing, okay? So, and now using the quarter inch, you don't really need a wobble. Extension, so a straight extension works great. All right. And it's starting nice and gentle by hand, right? And if you're afraid of then, you know, using the ratchet, don't be afraid to take it off and just do it with the extension. And that way you have a better feel. You're not starting crooked. That's the worst thing to do, start crooked. Um, and you mess that thing up. And believe me, engine cases, they're not the most expensive, but they're about really 550 bucks. And that does get expensive. Okay, so I'm at that point where it feels tight. All right, it's pretty snug. I just gave it one little, one little literal, probably a sixteenth of an inch turn. And that's all it takes. It does not take much. Got it snug. I felt like one sixteenth and then another sixteenth, so about, a, about an eighth of an inch turn. And we will double check that with the, uh, the uh, inch pound wrench and go from there. And so wipe any excess oil which we got a little bit on this little bridge here. Right. Here's another nice reason for having good Nerf bars. Grab the Nerf bar. It's a lot easier. And let's just slide that guy under. Okay, now we're ready to go drain that oil. Okay, <clears throat> there's our secondary oil drain plug right there. Okay, so basically you look around the shifter area right past the uh, neutral sensor, and there it is right there. And it has its own little drain hole for it. Okay, uh, and a lot of people don't know that there's a secondary plug. I've had a lot of people tell me that, like, wow, I didn't know that. I said, all right, well, you know, you should drain that one too. When you start the, the machine, most of it goes to the front anyways, and we're gonna discuss what that means as well. Um, so with the stock OEM skid plate, just give this little tab a little push down. Okay, all right, that way you actually get a nice, again, going back to our wobble extension because this is not straight, okay? This is not straight at all. So with your wobble extension, this makes it a lot easier. See, so I can actually pivot that, okay? If you try to put that in straight, yeah, you can get it off. Putting it back on is a beast with the 3 8 extension, okay? So same thing, you can already see that the uh, copper washer, and it's a lot easier so look in there, the copper washer is not stuck against the engine cases because if it's stuck against the engine cases, it is going to fall into the oil. So the copper washer is on the drain plug itself. So just little things to watch for, but it does make a difference. All right, and that oil is coming on out. All right, so we're back to our quarter inch ratchet extension, 12 millimeter. When you use this, it's a lot easier to uh, clear that frame, that lower frame rail, okay? So we're gonna go for it. So bolts there. The other thing, again, too, here's another another nice thing there. When it's at an angle, instead of being straight, you actually don't have to you don't have to pitch yourself so far as to drop the bolt. So putting the quad up on an angle does make life easier. By a long shot. And with the quarter inch, it just reaches just enough. Like to uh, pass the frame and then not be getting caught up in all. Funky. Now, 3 8 would be, it would never go straight. And I've had some people have some bad fortune using a 3 8 ratchet and they've gone sideways and stripped that thing. Okay, so we're snug already and we're going to give it a little. And that's it. That guy is good. And now we're going to check that again with our torque angle wrench or inch pound wrench. Excuse me, this is a torque angle wrench because it could do torque angle. Well, like I said, it does not have to be a snap-on, but it's set on inch-pounds. We can see that, 168 inch-pounds. Um, some of the things I do do, I do need to use torque to yield. So, there are a lot of things I do use torque to yield, so I need one that could do torque angle. So, this one we can actually watch. Nice big screen on it. Big screen, big screen, big screen. And there we go. All right. And honestly, it didn't even turn the bolt. Okay, we'll go to our front one now. 
I know we can't see the screen, but I mean, the stuff they're coming out with, it actually lights up. So I have heard some really good stuff about some of the uh, Cobalt um, torque angle wrenches. So, I mean, I've been using Snap-on ones forever. Okay, so we could probably see this from the side. It goes, you know, well, let's see. Let's see if we can get the camera refocused a little bit. There we go. And we're just gonna follow it just by the color. There we go. Good to go. All right, now we're on the oil filter side. Okay, here's our oil filter cap or bolts. Okay, and I took the jack stand out from this side and I've just transferred to the other side and now put the quad on an angle. So this way, you know, a slight angle. Right where the back tire is hovering off. So it's about also 12 inches off the ground. Okay, so here's the, the tips. Just do one at a time, loosen them all, okay? I try to start up here and work my way down. This bolt is a lot more unique because it actually goes through an O-ring. So sometimes if the cap is a little crooked, if you're fighting this one, you actually start tearing that O-ring. Okay, and I'm gonna show you, show you the next tip after now loosening them all. Take this bolt out. And again, a lot easier with a T-handle. Take that out, okay? That got to be right there. And it becomes its own oil drain. There you go. So we can start getting some of that oil on out. Gotta love Yamaha that they actually put little, um, you actually grab the bolts a lot of times. They actually have little um, indexing on the bolts or like you can actually grab it with your fingertips, especially when it's oily, all right? So some, some grip there on the bolt heads, on the uh, the Allens, right? Okay, watch for the, uh, there's O-rings back here. It's one, two, three O-rings on these things, okay? So be careful with it, give this thing a little wiggle. Okay, there we go. Our oil is gonna start coming out. There we go. All right, just give it a little wiggle and it will come out. Don't get wrong, when you, when you open it up, more will come out. And now here's again a benefit from tipping the quad up. Normally, the oil likes to get hit right here on the uh, skid plate, right? And where does it like to go? It likes to run right on down the skid plate and then start leaking in other places that will make you upset. I know because I've been there many a times. Um, yes, this is a little extra work, but again, you know, the reward, you know, for the sacrifice, well, to me, it's worth every bit of it. You're using those bolts to their advantage. I am using a tool. Anyways, you know, clean the threads off if they're dirty. All the good stuff, these are nice and dry. Fantastic. So, watch to make sure no O-rings fall out of this thing. It's easy. Give this guy a little twist. And man, I'll tell you what, that filter is on there like a rock. I'm telling you, it's like a Chevy. Just kidding. It's gonna come off. So there you go, without making any mess. And there we go. And looks good, our filter, right? So it's a nice clean shop rag. Um, Huge, huge things. All your O-rings. You should change your O-rings, replace your O-rings. It's the first time. I usually replace them every oil change or two, but you can check the uh, actual O-ring itself. And if that O-ring is protruding above, like so, you're good to go. When you take this filter out, I promise you, I think I've replaced about three or four motors I could think of last year. It was just by an accident. Watch what's happening to the uh, to the, the gasket. Look at the gasket, it's getting stuck. And I normally don't use the, the factory ones. I usually use the high flow or honestly the tusk ones. And this normally doesn't happen. I'm not saying this, this won't happen at all because it can't happen on any of them. But I've seen, so see how the gasket was sticking to the oil filter cap? If that thing gets stuck, I promise you, and you don't catch that, and you put the new oil filter on, you will crush that oil filter, and it will cause a, how do I say, basically a plug. You'll plug the thing, or you're gonna restrict the oil flow, and it will melt that other gasket. And I've seen liquid rubber go through the engine, and it it literally ends this hole right here. You know what I'm talking about? This hole goes literally straight through this side case, Okay, on into the main case, and it goes directly, and, and it, it does split, 
but the it literally split splits you know going around the the case but also the front you know straight ahead is the um the oil squirter the engine oil squirter and i've seen liquid rubber travel through this passage okay and go at that literally like a t and start to go on that loop for the engine case and that well starves oil to the transmission and the head and then also starves oil at the um bottom of the cylinder and you can only tell that a uh bottom end or excuse me, the bottom half of the cylinder is not going to survive very long with no oil oil you know spraying squirting in the bottom of that which keeps that lubricated so yeah this little gasket I've seen this little thing cause many problems. I, I think I probably did, f like I said, four engines show last year for that. So really, you know, check the back side of this cap. Look at it really good. And definitely you can only put this oil filter in one way. If you put it in the other way, you will crush this oil filter and cause the same thing. So check your oil filter, really good. Um, don't worry about cutting this thing open to look for, for brass shavings because there's no brass. <laughs> there's no side thrust washers in the crank. So I hear that people doing that a lot. Like, that's like a Honda thing, bro. And uh, well, that's a Honda thing. So having thrust washers on the sides of the crank. So Yamaha's, well, you can just take a peek in there. Look for any debris, look for any shavings, stuff like that. It's going to be caught in the elements. Um, worst case, like if you're having any chippings, but it's usually going to be like an, something aluminum or steel if you're having a catastrophic failure. Okay. And I've seen cranks lock up and not leave any anything at this oil filter so you know it's not always that you know present so anyways good things to inspect good things to check make sure all your o-rings are on there and make sure your main o-ring is on there and putting your oil filter in straight in okay and we're gonna do all that right now okay got our high flow oil filter i usually use the high flows with the uh, tusk filters okay rocky mountain exclusive so check them out rocky mountain atv mc.com we'll put definitely put a link in there so one way in, right? And once you put it in, you can actually feel it. It actually stays in there. So I kind of like that. There's no springs. There's no weird stuff to do. I mean, I've seen other manufacturers in the past do that kind of stuff. They wipe away that oil from the bottom. That way you're not fighting with it. Make sure all your, again, all your O-rings are on. All your surfaces are clean. And we'll just stick the guy just gently, just literally just, just gently with your thumb. Okay? I mean, nothing falls out. And just go ahead and put some of your bolts in. That lower O-ring, always inspect that guy. Um, I've seen where that lower O-ring likes to tear with this bolt because see how that bolt has a, a shoulder to it? So that bolt actually goes to that lower O-ring. Check that thing really good. It is it is worth having an extra set of O-rings. I have seen those leak, you know, uh, not when you're here in your garage or in your shop, but um, when you go to ride and then you start getting a boot full of oil, and there's nothing worse than that, so the thing starts to throw oil at you, and you're slipping and stuff on the brake pedal. <laughs> it's literally dripping it right there on your foot. I've experienced it. Um, now I carry actually the extra O-rings there in my bag when we go traveling, and nice and gentle. Don't go cranking them down. Just snug them down right quick. You know that if you're in a pinch, you don't have that O-ring. I'm not gonna say, I and mean, I know the OEM, they're gonna frown on it, but where you, and it has worked for me many a times where I didn't have an extra O ring, where I've swapped this O ring with that one. And then, you know, once I got another set of O rings, you know, change it out. Okay? So, anyways, again, use your common sense. A T handle is really good. You don't have to go ape on this thing. You have to use two hands, just one hand. Give it a turn with the uh, longest. You have less torque, not with, the, not with this part. Okay? You don't have to go crazy on it because this is 7.2 foot pounds of torque or 86 inch pounds and which we will check right now with the uh, digital torque wrench and i'll i'll take a look also too if there's i, I want to say it was cobalt i've heard some of the guys said that cobalt was pretty good that they had a pretty good all-around torque wrench that did a like a 3 8 one that way you could do like you do top ends but it'd go really low as far as on torque. And that's the key element is, you know, having the wrench that actually does, if you're using a torque wrench, the one that actually does what you need. Okay. 86, right? 86 inch pounds, All right? We're going to put small extension. 
There's our five mil. And really our bolt did not even move. So keep the camera, keep the camera on the uh, bolt. And we'll see if it even moves. Apparently my hand is just as good as the torque wrench. And that one did move a little bit, so pretty good. That would move plus, less than a 16th. So knowing I, when I go around these, I just go around them nice and even snug, 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 snug. And then I give a little a little, little twist to it, like maybe a 16th, a 16th, 16th, and I go around and then do it again and do it almost a third time. But I usually like to feel that in the wrist. I've been doing it for a lot of years, so I feel that in the wrist. I feel like I'm putting a little too much pressure on the wrist. Got to stop. But again, don't use this side where you can put a ton of torque. Use the less end side. That way you're not gonna strip these guys. Cause I have seen this one strip many times before. Not by me. <laughs> I've had them come in and, and have to replace this whole side case cover. And you know, they do wear out. There's no way around it eventually. I mean, I have been able to fix them, but if it's something that we can avoid, great. All right, we're gonna put our oil in. So recap, our drain plugs are on, they're tight. Our oil filter is in the right way. All the O-rings are in and the filter cap has been torqued down appropriately. Now it's time for oil. We're gonna use AMS oil, the uh, Dirt Series motorcycle oil, 10W40. Um, and I don't see this at a lot of bike shops. Usually they'll carry like the um, ATV, UTV oil. Well, that's for, think about it. You know, that's like saying, hey, let me, you know, put, you know, for a race car, you know, diesel oil in it. Simple as that. It's for a different, you know, RPM, uh, completely different, and it doesn't have the properties for, well, this style of clutches, you know, um, oil soaked clutches, right? Wet clutch oil. Um, plus, also, you know, the oil is shared between the engine, the crank side, the transmission, and the clutch. So, this oil is doing a lot. So, uh, check out our link below. Okay. We will have that, you know, on our link, an AMS oil 10W40. So this is for race bike oil. So race dirt bike, race quad. So this is specifically designed for this. And also too, like, um, they have a lot of specifics, which is awesome. Like for the Hondas, they have a um, an oil specifically just for the transmissions, for the Hondas for split case engines. And I've had a lot of Hondas before where they were creeping out of a start for the whole shot. And they've changed clutch, they've changed oils, this and that. And Amsoil has an oil specifically formulated for that and it helps reduce that by a, a huge factor um, specifically for split case oil. So check them out on their website. They have tons of stuff. It's crazy. So anyways, oil is going in and it is going to drop in plenty of oil in this guy. Just right. I'm not going to deny it. I have a bad habit i have no problem just leaving it there and just leaving it there for you know a few minutes to make sure i get every drop out of it we're gonna go back over to our chart and we're gonna go through a couple quick things while that um fills up capacity i see that a lot how much oil should i put we're gonna talk about that right now all right so the capacity going back to our manual i mean at least it's good they give you an idea you know changing the oil without the oil filter element i mean i don't know why you wouldn't change the oil filter but hey you know change it so they say it comes out to 1.48 us quarts with oil filter element comes out to 1.74 honest to god truth so that is like at the full full i mean i'm talking about like like at the tip top of the dipstick like it's about to like come out um quart and a half puts it right in the middle every time I think I've been using it for, I've been using these bikes as a little after 09, so right after they had first came out. So I've been using them for a while. I have never had one have a problem. There are, I've, I've had them where I've definitely put, you know, exactly like a quart, you know, one and three quarter quarts of oil, and it was way up there at the top. And and a big concern some people have is, dude, well, how about also, to, you know, I'm losing horsepower because I'm overfilling the engine. So yes and no, it depends on what kind of engine setup you have. This is gonna be, we'll make it quick, so pay attention. So there's two different engine types, right? A wet sump and a dry sump engine, right? You can have both. Or can you? 
there is no external oil filter tank on the YFZ450R, right? This is 09. However, we have ourselves a nice demo set of stripped engine case here. Nothing wrong with them. Customers just want new cases. This front part right here, you know what this is? This is the oil tank. This is where the majority of the oil goes. And so when you start the bike, the motor, like they tell you to, it puts most of the oil here, right? So when you open the drain plug, the majority of the oil comes out here, right? So that's why when you open the back one, just a little bit comes out, right? So the YFC450R, even though all the oil is in it, it is essentially a dry sump engine. It is a dry sump engine. And then what that refers to is, even if it's filled all the way to the top, there's no horsepower loss. What did I just say? There's no horsepower loss. Because a dry sump oil engine only takes as much oil as it needs. I've had it where they've had oil extensions and whatnot, I've filled them things where they take two quarts of oil, put on the dyno, it made no difference. Or I've ran them to where they had just above half a quart. It's like, eh, how far do we want to take this? And it really made no difference. Versus a wet sump, wet sump engine, right? It's always going to have so much oil inside the crankcase half or in the crankcase part of it, right? So that makes sense. If you have less oil for race applications, right? Do not say that to your manufacturers or avoid your warranty. Like if you have a Honda, as an example, I'm not picking on Honda, but I'm just saying like a Honda or like a, think of like a KTM, something like that, or Husqvarna. We're seeing where they where there's a wet sump engine. That yes, not running a full, you know, the full amount of oil. Yes, it does pick up on power because now you're not having resistance from oil splash, right? So those are the the ideas. So I've heard of you guys saying, man, you know, I, I've I've seen a whole or so horsepower from you know running less oil. I have never seen that with my own dyno back to back and draining the oil right there on the spot. So it has never happened on a YFZ 450R. So hey man, if you like you know running low on oil, good for you. If not, I mean I like to keep it you know right in the middle or better. So you know whatever. But I hope that helps shed a little bit of light on dry sump engines and wet sump engines. So the YFZ 450R it carries it all and the tank is internal inside of it. So how cool is that? Somebody was thinking when they designed this engine. So good stuff versus the carb YFZ. Literally, you don't have this part here. So when you think about a carb YFZ, the engine case is very low at the bottom and it obviously goes up. Well, that's because the oil tank is external, right? So a, a carb YFZ is external, an LTR is external, 400X is external, Z400 is external, plus the clone bikes, so on and so forth. That's why on the instructions, and also too, it's not uncommon when the motor is cold, when you go to first check your oil, cold engine, so sitting overnight, you go to pull the dipstick, it shows, man, there's nothing here on the dipstick. Where did it all go? Don't fill it with more oil, because you're gonna overfill that thing. And a lot of people do, I mean, a lot of people do. Turn the engine on first, have a leap of faith, ask Jesus to take the wheel, it's gonna be okay. Promise you, turn the engine on, like 30, 45 seconds, or a minute, it's not gonna blow up, because there is, it is marking oil at the bottom, then check it. And I guarantee it's going to be within the crosshairs of this dipstick. As long as it's within those crosshairs or in the uh, M to F, you never going to have a problem. Okay. But preferably somewhere here, that's usually one and a, one and a half quarts puts you right there in between the middle and full. And you don't have a problem. Okay. If you have a JLS full clear cover or a JLS sight glass, that makes life even easier. So you don't even have to pull the dipstick. So check it out, JLS Motorsports, ATV. Cool stuff, cool products. That's the one that I run, so I'll be having one of those here in Atomic Yellow coming soon. I'll show you how to put one of those on here soon. All right, guys? Anyways, we're gonna finish up and we're gonna show you, you know, start up and then check in the oil, okay? All right, so we already got our oil filled up. We should take a look over the top. Our oil is all the way at the top. So, I mean, obviously no need to stick the, put the dipstick in. It is all the way tip top. Right below the threads, I should say, you know. Well, maybe quarter inch under the threads. That was a quart and a half. Our key, right? We definitely do not want to not <laughs> start the bike without the key. So that's why I take it off. Because I, I did once before. I will not lie to you. I, uh... Had the key in, I totally forgot to put that that dipstick in, and man, let me tell you what a mess that makes. It's okay. Engine's on, it's in neutral. Obviously, I would not sit here in a neutral. 
is good, tight. <laughs> Check that beast. I obviously give it a wipe, right? It's clean. Dipstick. Again, if you had a JLS full clear cover or sight glass, that would make life a lot easier. I would definitely be getting a hold of one of those. She's on the way. I'll show you that how convenient that is. And our oil is so clean, it is literally right here like literally it's so darn clean it is three quarters up on the uh crosshair or right up like barely above under the f so that's a quarter and a half so a quarter and a half is perfect on a yz 450r like it is just enough i mean also too that gives room for expansion as well so all right so oil breathers that's gonna be another hot topic we'll talk about. What is the purpose of an oil breather on an ATV? Why doesn't a dirt bike have an oil breather? Why does an ATV have a dirt, uh, an oil breather? And what are the pros and cons? And I will explain that as best I can in simple, you know, get it simple, break it down. I hope I did really good as far as that on the oil change. You know, some good tech tips and just take your time. Honestly, when you have it down and then you're going through your routine maintenance, it's awesome. Again, a quart and a half of AMS oil, 10W40 was used. And even better, I'm so used to using the AMS oil bottles have a great, nice, big, wide, you know, window of sight here. Okay. So you could actually see, you know, it's at the 16. So why is that the 16? Well, that's half, half of one quart. Uh, one quart is 32 ounces. So it's easy as you're pouring it. You'll see it disappear right there when you get to the half. Put it right on the bench every time, like a charm. So it makes it a lot easier and quicker, especially like in a race circumstances where you had to change i've had to change oil in the pits you know in a in a container i gotta close really quick for my racers or something like that or you know people I'm, I'm wrenching for and stuff and it's been like wow you gotta like go 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 and just you just need to know your stuff what you're working with so it's again thanks for watching as always also too if there's something that you're having difficulties with please leave us a comment you know below you know like and subscribe as always and obviously we're going to take, you know, if there's something that's that's a common problem or something that that maybe may not be so hard for me that I've, through my, my process with these bikes, I've, you know, not had an issue with, but more people are seeing a problem with, let me know, you know, we'll take that into consideration, see what I can come up with for a solution to help simplify a problem or what's a better solution, you know, like oil breathers, um, you know, like ECUs, all those things. We're going to go do exhaust. We're waiting for a few parts coming in for exhaust systems. So also watch for the exhaust shootout coming up it is going to be awesome but yeah you know any comments any thoughts please leave it you know below leave it on our on our, our messages and uh we'll check it out and also you know make something for us so if we get you know we'll look at all those things you know or if there's something personally you're having and you know it doesn't have to be a video thing just a quick an you know a quick answer maybe something please let us know so we're, the whole idea for this is to help and give back to the community help to educate help to teach and also, simple maintenance things, you know, help empower individuals. That way, <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching, as always.